I'm working on building a video that centers around smart home projects being taken on by automators around us and that's in order to give you some ideas but I wanted to show you what I was working on in terms of projects right now. Hello Automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and today I really have very little intention of saving you time because to be honest, I just want to show you what I'm working on. This is again, you know what, the world is still in a really strange place and I put out that video last month that it's normally for our patrons and they get a monthly video that is kind of more like this where it's just low-key Brian just kind of talking about things he's doing and showing you know a few inside pieces to what it's like at Automate Your Life what we're doing what we're working on and that's what I'm going to do today now I do I totally have to thank my patrons I know this is two months in a row guys and many of you have stepped up to help us during this pandemic and during this really really difficult time and I understand that some of you could not continue supporting Automate Your Life and no hard feelings, I totally get it. A lot of people are in tough places right now and I'm, I'm just happy that you were able to contribute at some point and I'm happy that you also took the decision to take care of yourself and your family first. So go ahead, do that if you need to and if you'd like to join us and help us out, please do, the links are down below. So let's get into what I'm working on. Now, number one, uh, I wanna tell you that in a lot of cases when I get a device from a company, uh, it is under an agreement for a sponsorship. What happens with that is, number one, I have to like the company, I have to like what I see out of them in terms of uh, responsibility, privacy, security, I have to like already what I've read and what I understand and you know from friends and family and other people that I interact with on the channel from a reliability standpoint it's one of the biggest things for me because it can waste your time so much if something's not reliable so all of those things have to be in place and then I will move to the point and actually Madeline uh, really moves us to this point where we have a worked out arrangement in terms of money and in terms of sponsorship and how they might sponsor it. Now, once that happens, I get it and I start bench testing. So what I'm doing right now is uh, I'm bench testing an anchor and this is Eufy Security Video Doorbell. Someone is at the doorbell. Show me the doorbell. Okay. So far I've been really impressed with this and I've actually moved it out of the bench testing phase and into more of a realistic installation but not a final installation just yet. I want to try a couple of methods here before I talk to you guys about it and I always like to give it some time. So initially what I actually just do is I connect it to uh, a, a good Wi-Fi spot area or I connect it to uh, a wired connection in my office and then I make sure that it's going to work really reliably that way and then I kind of expand it out and only change a few variables every time. So the Eufy security video doorbell here, it's a 2K video doorbell, battery powered or wired, local storage. I've actually been really impressed with its reliability now. It doesn't give me notifications that I don't need but does give me notifications that I do need. Uh, the one thing is so far uh, people aren't pressing the button a whole ton. So that's because it's sitting next to another video doorbell on my front door. So, you know, I, it's kind of one of the funny points of testing these things. But so far, whenever people have pressed it, it's been pretty good. Now, one thing that happens after kind of the bench testing process or after I've worked with a product for a while, had it in my home, I decide whether or not I actually want to go through with a sponsored video. And in some cases, I say no. And that's because it didn't meet the criteria for me. I think it doesn't have any real applications for you guys and so I just say no thank you and we move on now that doesn't happen a ton because usually we've we've kind of sorted out whether or not it's going to be a good product before we enter into conversations with the company but you know what 
in some cases we still miss it and in some cases I just want to try something and see if I've stumbled onto something really great and I think this product really fits that and it is a smart home hub from a company called YoLink or maybe it's YoSmart I, I still can't tell but <laughs> Uh, they are using the LoRa technology in terms of a communication system or communication method. So this is another smart home protocol that's existed for a while, much more prevalent in terms of uh, long range transmission. So cities are using uh, this much more than say something like Z-Wave or Zigbee. So you know what, that happens quite a bit with this technology, but this is really one of the first smart home applications of that technology. Now, what came out here is there wasn't enough integration for me in other platforms. It's a smart home hub with four or five devices that I have in my home, uh, but it doesn't really integrate with anything or at least not enough. And I didn't find the individual devices to be unique or really, really interesting. They basically, in a lot of cases, took devices that are already created for like the Tuya platform and really just changed the communication module in it. So, I mean, great idea if you're looking for a different protocol to use than Zigbee or Z-Wave or any of those things. But in the end, I didn't find it reliable enough. But I'd like to hear what you guys think about a solution like this coming onto the channel, even just from a conversation standpoint. You know, this is another smart home protocol. We could talk about it. Um, so I'd like to hear what you think about this. We could also do a full review of a device like that, but I think you heard already the gist of what I might say. Speaking of smart home hubs, and you see the box sitting over here. I've had it on my table for quite a while, but I decided it was finally time to take the plunge and show you guys what it's like to change from a V2 to a V3 or really just uh, a V1 to a V3 of any of the SmartThings hubs. And let me tell you, this is a pain. It is easily the worst thing I have done in my smart home and I moved. So uh, it, it's the hardest thing. It's the least fun. Um, it has the most pitfalls and it has the most uh, effort involved of anything I've had to do in my smart home and that's that's just the truth now it doesn't mean it's not something you should do and we'll talk about that as we go forward in the channel but right now it's a real pain and I don't think that Samsung could fix this it's not their fault really and let me let me explain that actually um, it's not their fault because Zigbee and Z-Wave do not allow you without a secure connection process basically. So you can't just move devices across hubs. They have to be physically paired to that hub. Um, Zigbee's a little bit different. You can get away with some things, but there's no real software method that I have seen. And I don't think Samsung could create one without getting in a lot of trouble with the Zigbee Alliance and or uh, Z-Wave, the Z-Wave Alliance either. So it's really not their fault and you're going to have this when you migrate any smart home hub. Now one of the reasons I'm doing that is because Alan has been working with Hubitat for a long time. I want to give him a Samsung SmartThings hub that he can go forward with and I clearly don't need to. So I thought, okay, I'll take out my V2. He can start working with that, compare it much more to Hubitat and that's the other other project that I'm really working on. I've started to kind of section off my house uh, in order to actually do some comparisons in terms of reliability, in terms of actual data uh, or actual integration between Hubitat and some of the end devices, because that's some of the drawbacks of Hubitat is they really, they need lots of uh, the custom device handlers and they don't have all the integrations out there so you have to be a little more resourceful in terms of finding devices that work and then getting them to work but I've undertaken that I want to switch part of my smart home over to that and I want to then talk to you guys about the differences between the two platforms on a deeper and deeper basis and I also just want to show you lots of tutorials on our tutorials channel which Alan has been working on he's been creating great unboxing and setup videos just to start here just to get them started with some of the creation of, creation of uh, video content but the other thing that Alan has been working on with me is the creation of a second ebook so 
Um, when I created the voice assistant battle, and I mean, it's a one hour video, I talk forever, and some people just don't wanna consume content like that in a video format, and I get that, and I try and index it to make it easy, but that's about as much as I could do other than maybe dance the entire time and, and make a idiot out of myself. But, you know, what we decided to do was really to create an ebook out of that. And Alan's done lots of work in terms of that. We decided to partner together. He has a lot of background in areas that I don't, and I have background in areas he doesn't. So I think it makes a lot of sense, and I'm really excited to, to be very close to launching that second ebook. Now, right now, today, actually, uh, I did two very high energy videos or high high energy for me. So, <laughs> I mean, what does that mean? I guess it means I raised my voice a couple of times um, beyond this. I, I don't know. Anyways, it felt high energy and high impact. And, uh, you know, and then I thought, well, I'll take it down a level. And it's taken me a little bit of time actually to kind of come down that level here with you guys. But, um you know, one of the things that I've been working on is really with the wise cameras, they, they're so complicated despite being $20 cameras because they've tried to solve so much with software and with their application. And then they've gone and they've added these really diverse types of devices. So, you know what, I went out and I created a four part series. And the first part was that app walkthrough that you guys saw. And then we're just gonna get the most out of those cameras through a three part series. So the app walkthrough was really the beginning of a four part series. And I hope, you know, Wise is paying a little attention. They didn't actually even send me the Wise band or the Wise scale here. I think it's cause I got upset cause you guys keep telling me hey, they won't ship anywhere else in the world. And I said, hey guys, you won't ship up to me so I can't tell people, you know, within a good amount of time. Uh, and they did, then they didn't offer me the band or the scale. So maybe I said it too harshly. But anyways, I hope they're paying attention, guys. And I hope you uh, send me one of those very soon so that we can talk about them on the channel along with everything else. Now, kind of the last thing I want to talk to you guys about... Uh, Last time I put out the video that the world was kind of in a strange place, the last Patreon exclusive that we didn't make a Patreon exclusive again. Um, you know, when I put that out, I talked about the loss of revenue and I think I actually uh, got some people worried. And um, I think you just need to know something about me. Uh, I don't quit and to a fault in, in some cases, but uh, I'm not going anywhere. Uh, I have no plans of changing Automate Your Life. Is it a bit of a struggle right now? Yeah, it's a little bit of a scary time and there are days uh, that I sit and I get a little concerned about where things are headed, but you know what? I have a lot of faith in the fact that we are working extremely hard and yeah, we're creating as much as we can it, for, for the benefit of you in a very specific direction. And so I don't want to worry you. That's That wasn't the point of that last video and that's not the point of this. Uh, the point of this is we're going to be here. We're going to work hard. We're going to figure it out. There has been loss of revenue and there probably will continue. Uh, it will continue to deepen, I think. I mean, Amazon was just real nasty with affiliate links just this last week. Not that I used them a ton, um, but they totally hacked a bunch of their affiliate percentage uh, that they give out for clicks and sales. Um, many vendors have closed off affiliate sales. So I'm, I'm on the search for a different affiliate network to start to use and to start to point you guys towards. Um, Patreon, we had some real flux. Some people really stepped up though and that was really important. It made me feel good inside in general. So, you know, uh, that had a bit of a swing, but overall we actually ended up in over uh, what we were the month before on Patreon over the last month. So that's been really positive to see and I really appreciate people stepping up in such a hard time. Um, but yeah, I mean, everything else has dropped, but that doesn't change, 
you know, the fact that I wanted to change my life by doing this. And that doesn't change the fact that I want to change other people's lives. So uh, this, this isn't going away. I don't mean to worry you and we'll just keep going. So now if you do want to help us out, please do check out some of the links down below. Join Patreon. That's actually up on screen right now. You can join our tutorials channel. You can join this channel or in general, you can just become a supporter, comment, share our videos with other uh, communities that you are a part of. So thanks everyone for watching. And of course, don't hate, automate.